While the dragons, khans and clans claim the headlines, there's a lot more to Fate Reforged. Let's take a look inside the R&D puzzle box from the set that is literally made manifest. The first set is Khans of Tarkir. It's all about the Khans. The third set is Dragons of Tarkir. Hope I'm not giving too much away here. There might be dragons in it. Okay, so we know that we go back in time. There's, it's, a, it's a crossroads, if you will. One crossroads is Khans. The other crossroads is dragons and that we needed the middle set to feel like there is this key decision, that it is the crossroads of history. One path is Khans, one path is dragons. So the Siege is, is a rare cycle of enchantments that show a legendary dragon attacking one of the Khans posts. So the outpost Siege shows Kolagon attacking the Mardu. And we wanted these cards to convey kind of a turning point of who do you think is going to win the battle, the dragons or the cons? So you actually choose which one you think will win when it enters the battlefield. So if you've cast one of the sieges, it enters the battlefield and you make a choice. Let's say I choose cons. Now if another player gains control of it, that choice doesn't change. It basically it has the cons text, it doesn't have the dragons text. But let's say it returns to my hand and I get to cast it again. This time I might make a different choice. Now some of the time, you are literally choosing between cons and dragons. But that's the high profile. There's a cycle that does that. Um, but we also wanted to make sure even at the common level that choice is a key part of it. And so there's a lot of cards in the set where when you play the card, it's like, are you going path A or are you going path B? Another aspect of this set that was very interesting to deal with was the, with the fact that this the Dragons of Tarkir being the large set that when you're drafting with Fate Reforged is drafted first, it's chronologically coming out after uh, Fate Reforged, but is going to be draft, drafted first in order. So normally, we're basically, it is a time travel block because we're making a set, the second set, ahead of the first set in that draft word. It was crazy. We're talking to Tom Lapilli, the lead developer of uh, Dragons of Tarkir all the time about here's what we're finding. What are you doing over there? We need to know what you're doing over there way sooner than we normally need to know about a third set so that we can properly set up the second set to draft properly ahead of it. Uh, things were changing all the time on Tom's side and we had to react to that uh, for Fate Reforged to make sure that Fate Reforged was the glue for both of these large sets in the limited environments. We knew we wanted to position the set as uh, a lead in to Cons of Tarkir because when you're drafting Fate Reforged and Cons of Tarkir, you start with the Fate Reforged pack first. So uh, we put in a few cards at the common level, uh, the cycle of enemy uh, gold cards, multicolor cards. Uh, and what these do is uh, you'll see them floating around in the booster pack and you'll say, hey, Here's a blue, green, gold card at common. Maybe these colors are open. I'll jump into blue and green. And what that does is it sets you up for when you hit the Cons of Tarkir packs. If you are in an enemy color pair, two color pair, it gives you access to two of the clans instead of only one. So if you are in blue, green coming into Cons of Tarkir, you can hop into either Teemer or Sultai. So this is an example of how development sort of infuse the set with these signposts that point you in the right direction headed into Cons of Tarkir. One of the challenges of Fate Reforged is it has to play nice and limited with both Khans of Tarkir and Dragons of Tarkir. So here's the tricky part. Khans of Tarkir is a wedge set. It's about three color combinations. Dragons of Tarkir is not. So how do you play with something that's a wedge set with something that's not a wedge set? Uh, and one of the solutions was using one of my favorite mechanics, hybrid. Now another fan favorite making its return in Fate Reforged it is hybrid mana. Now a hybrid mana symbol can be paid with either of two colors of mana. For example, check out Shaman of the Great Hunt. And it's a red card, and its last ability is an activated ability. Now the cost to activate that ability is two of any mana, and those two symbols, each one of those can be paid with either a green mana or a blue mana. Now you can make a different choice for each one. So for example, to activate that ability, I can pay two and two green, or two and two blue, or two a green and a blue. The cycle of mythic creatures in Fate Reforged is another great example of our effort to support wedge without being wedge, and hybrid mana was activation cost is a great way to do that. So Soulfire Grandmaster was a really challenging one 
it has some weird text on it. First, I don't think we've ever given uh, spells lifelink before. That was, that was one of those rules manager moments of, can we do this? Yeah? All right, we're going to do this. So we're in a Fate Reforged design meeting one day, and Ken Nagel has the idea, what if we did a Figure of Destiny style card, but for the clans? What would that look like? So we came up with some stats and tried it, and that was a little too strong, and we tried some new set of stats and new abilities, and we all loved the idea through design and development of this creature. And we tried so many different combinations for it, until eventually we ended up on the one we have now. And I love this card. I think it's going to get played quite a bit. It can go in a green-white deck, a green-black deck, a full-on Obzon deck, and watch out. We even let you use the last ability multiple times. So if you have the mana to do it, you can just keep putting those counters on over and over, turn after turn, until your opponent is crunched to nothing. So the rune mark cycle is a kind of clever way to do a wedge card without actually doing it. So you have a white, the Abzan rune mark. It's looking for a black or a green permanent that you control. So it looks like you need a black, green, and a white deck to play it, but it actually works great. Just a white, black, just a white, green deck. And you have the sweet trick of putting it on your morph creature or your manifesto creature that's colorless, and you turn your creature face up, and suddenly your rune mark works. So the big challenge with designing something like Wandering Champion is it's a base white creature, but it has to have an effect that could be both blue or red. So looking at the overlaps between the two is really important. Fortunately, blue and red both do looting. So we looked at that, figured out it was a cool thing to do, a neat thing to put on an aggressive creature, has nice stats, a 3-1 for 2, and if you're playing with blue and red, you can loot some cards away and draw some new ones. Meringue River Prowler is works very well with a Sultai deck. You have a lot of self-milling going on in a Sultai deck, and so he can come back from the graveyard as long as you're playing one of the other Sultai colors. Uh, I think you'll find that he'll work very well in Dragons of Tark here, but in a different way. Yeah, there, there are a lot of things I think to be proud with what we did with Fate Reforge. Um, you know, th this is certainly a novel space trying to get a set to draft with two different large sets. We, we pulled that off. I think Fate Reforged will stick around as, man, they managed to fit all this stuff in there. There's all these clues woven in there that you could see. Like, wow, look at all these large elephants that are nice and tasty if something bigger were to come along. Look at these cool cards that point forward one way and point forward a different way. Uh, look at all these great mechanics that play well forward and play well backwards. So all this stuff is a very complicated puzzle that I think ultimately we will remember as Khan's last three set block needed three sets to tell the whole story. One of the neat things about the design of Fate Reforge is we clearly are giving a lot of nods toward Khan's Tark here. We're making sure it drafts really well with Khan's Tark here. That Fate Reforge is the linchpin. We're making sure you understand the role it has. But the neatest thing about it is just as we had to drop all these things to hint at cons, we did an equal number of things of dragons. So if you want to know what comes next, look in Fate Reforge, because inside it is Dragons of Tarkir. There's an uncertain future, indeed an uncertain present, awaiting the plane of Tarkir. But now it's time for you to take charge of your own fate and claim your own manifest destiny. Join us again next time when we'll take to the skies with dragons of Tarkir. But until we meet again on Inside R&D, I'm your host Richard Hagen, saying bye. <laughs>